Hi, this is Jay Sachs with a little topic today talking about exit strategy for your watches. This was inspired by a video by ID Guy. Be sure to check it out, his channel and so forth. It's a great channel and he's a great person. Anyway, in the video, he was talking about this person who had a Rolex watch and the watch was valuable to him. He did not want to wear it and he was debating whether he should just kind of keep it in pristine condition. And I was thinking, well, when this guy dies, his kids or son, daughter, or whatever, it's going to take that watch and basically just get a few dollars out of it. And then that'll be that. So he should really enjoy it while he is alive. It made me think about this whole concept of exit strategy for watches. So I'll tell you a couple of stories. The first story is fictional. So there's this movie that came out several years ago. It's called The Ninth Gate. It stars Johnny Depp. In this particular movie, he's a rare book collector slash kind of a, I don't want to say con man, but a rare book collector businessman, shall we say. And he tries to buy rare books for the lowest possible price. In the beginning of the movie, he goes to this estate of an individual who appears to have some kind of stroke whereby he's paralyzed and cannot speak in a wheelchair. And this particular individual, this older individual, has two kids in this library of rare books. So this character, Johnny Depp, goes there and does an appraisal of the estate. And he says, oh, in these particular four books, I'll give you some money for this and wave some cash in the face of those kids for those books. And they see the cash, they take it. And they show the old man in the wheelchair who can't speak and he's crippled. He kind of like is like shivering and grunting because he realizes that his stupid kids just sold his valuable books for a very, very low price. And sure enough, the book collector, Johnny Depp, he went to the collection, picked out the best, most valuable ones and lowballed them, paid the money and then left. And you see this repeated in real life. I think people make an entire business out of it, people that buy estates. So the older person dies, they have a house full of stuff or maybe a collection, and the heirs or the kids don't know much about it, so they call on these estate people. And of course, the estate people are experts in a variety of categories, including antiques or rare items and they end up buying things for pennies on the dollar. Now, so you may not have any rare books around the house um, in your estate, but that's a fictional story that made me think of this situation as well. Now, here's a real life story. Now, I met the gentleman several years ago, a very nice older gentleman, and we were just making some small talk, and this particular person, he collects antique toys. So he told me he has like literally thousands of these antique toys and so forth. And um, he invited me over to check out his house to look at them. And this is a, a wealthy individual. And his house is entirely full of these very, very old antique toys. So he has literally, I think, maybe five or six rooms just, just um, filled up with these antique toys. And he was telling me about the history of some of them and some are from, you know, 1800s, 1900s, these um, very intric intricate mechanical toys. I don't have any toys here as props, sorry guys, but I have this little lighter. This is a prop. It's actually a nice little watch lighter. It's a lighter, pocket lighter vintage, but has a little kind of a watch there. Anyway, I know you two people want to have things to look at and they get mad at me for not having enough things to look at. So I'm trying to give you guys some props. We have an old book. <laughs> we have a proxy for a toy. But anyway, so going back to the story, this particular gentleman had these extremely valuable toys and he was showing me some of these prices. And apparently there's a whole community of collectors of these antique toys. And he told me it's international. People have offered him, you know, lots of money for even just one particular toy. He had these beautiful examples of different, um, you know, metal and so forth toys that were very, very expensive. And 
once again, this is an older gentleman, and he only had one son, and his son happened to live there. And the son, I met him, the son, <laughs> he, he's in his 40s and what I would call a, a deadbeat son, if that makes sense. So has no job, has no particular aspirations or motivations, and doesn't appear to do anything apart from play video games and smoke pot. But the father is, you know, kind of unaware. Maybe he's in denial, but he's telling me his son is like, oh, he's a good kid. He works hard. And then talking to the son for a moment, he's like, hey, do you want some bud? And so he's offering me pot. And um, anyway, so then the son, he was saying, are you boring this guy with your toy collection? And so the son doesn't really care about the, his um, dad's collection or his prized possessions. He's like, yeah, this crazy old man collects toys but the son de does realize there's quite a bit of monetary value this is the case where the the father is taking a lifetime to accumulate all these valuable things the father successful in business has some money and has these toys that he really cherishes and then you have this deadbeat son who's essentially waiting to inherit the kingdom he's going to inherit a beautiful house he's going to inherit money most likely as well as a vast collection of toys. And this is the case where as soon as the old man croaks, this son's gonna call some guy, say, hey, give me like, you know, $10,000 for these toys. And the old man's gonna be in his grave rolling over because he knows the true value, which is probably excess multiples of that. I would conservatively estimate his, his vintage toys are easily in the six figures based upon my observations. I'm not an expert, but let me tell you, this guy had a very impressive collection. And that gets us to the topic of watches, if you're still with me. So think about yourself, guys. I'm not sure how old you are, or if you have heirs or kids or whatever, who knows? So if you have kids, I think as a parent, you don't realize when your kids are dead beats, for the most part, I think you see them in the, maybe a different light. And you're thinking to yourself, ah, when I die, my kid will cherish this watch I gave him or her. And I told them about the value of my collection. They won't just dump it off to some pawn shop to buy money for drugs. Well, that's most likely going to happen when you die. So my question for you is, what is your exit strategy for watches? So, you know, if you're getting older or in poor health, you may have a stroke whereby you can't talk, you're paralyzed and you're in a wheelchair and you can't enjoy your watches, and you got to sit by and watch as your kids sell them off for pennies on the dollar. Or you may die, and then once again, you have a collection of watches that who knows what's going to happen to them. Maybe your cousin comes in, ransacks your house, takes the watches, goes, sells them for drugs. Who knows what's going to happen? But in any event, your watches will not be appreciated to the same degree that you appreciate them. So it underscores a few things. So number one, guys, wear your watches. If you love your watches, wear them. Don't keep them in the safe. I mean, obviously for protection, we're not wearing them, but wear them on a regular basis. Don't hide them in the safe and wear them proudly. If they get a nick or a scratch, that's from living life. Don't be so afraid of that. Wear your watches and enjoy your watches. Live life in your watches because what may happen you get to a point where you cannot live life in your watches, either literally or, what's that term? Metaphorically. Anyway, so what is your exit plan, guys? Um, do you have like a will that says these watches will be sold at auction? Or are you planning on liquidating when you find yourself getting older, maybe becoming just a one watch person at some point and taking that cash and doing something with it that you wanted to do maybe or give it to a good cause because your deadbeat family may not be the best cause in terms of you giving your valuable watches or money to. So I'm curious, guys, do you have an exit strategy for your watches? And at what age do you say, hey, you know what? I got too many watches. They're too valuable. I'm going to die. We all die, guys. That's just the way it is. I'm going to die. At what point do you begin to either sell some off or make some specific plans for your valuable watches when you go, oh, this is the prop for a valuable watch, by the way. So I know you guys love visual displays and props. Let me know if you guys have exit strategy for your watches and what it is if you do have one. Thank you for watching this a bit longer video. This is Jay Sykes, hoping you have a nice day, if possible. Bye.